Welcome to True Vine Talks with Rachel Linda. I got my nifty microphone here. You like? I do. Can you hear me better? I think so, I guess. All right, cool. Oh. We, want it, we want our listeners to be able to hear well. So today, Miss Rachel and I are doing a continuance of, and I'm pulling up her book right now, The Highly Sensitive Person. And we've been enjoying Elaine Aaron's book very much. So it's truly been um, a delight and inspiring and just so so enlightening how about what's it been like for you Rachel so so helpful not only for myself but as a therapist working with people too I've been sharing some posts about how like I feel like it's helping me be a better therapist in in practice it does help us yes understanding highly sensitive people because I think a lot of people confuse that feeling of of being highly sensitive and feeling overwhelmed by their environment right that gets confused with anxiety which we mentioned last time but we want to go a little more in depth about that like what is like that overstimulation and arousal versus fear and anxiety. Is that right? Yes. Yes, Miss Rachel. Yeah. So when we when we define anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder, that those symptoms are I have difficulty controlling how much I worry. Um, I feel um, you know restless you know, on edge, uh, the body feels tightened and stressed. And um, let me think, I'm trying to think of all the symptoms. You got some more for me? Difficulty concentrating. Good. Right. And it feels like the, the worry is, is difficult to control. Like it's out, feels like it's out of one's control. Like I can't stop worrying and being afraid of different things. Hmm. Yeah, and, and the thoughts are always a little bit angst or whatever, just feeling a little bit on edge. What if, what if, you know, there's a tornado in Tennessee, you know, mm. mom angst. Yeah. Yeah. What if they're out there driving and someone pulls out in front of them? Mm-hmm. What if my hair looks ridiculous? Your hair is looking great. And I love that color pink on you. It's very pretty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what if, what if, what if in the thoughts provokes, you know, what we call arousal. Mm-hmm. And she talks about arousal in the book. And that's, um, oh yeah. I like what she said. She said that we're, the two things that are always true for all people is that she said that we don't do well if we feel, or no, we feel best when we're neither too bored nor too aroused. Oh, somewhere in the middle. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I love when we are reading the same book and then talk about it. We haven't done this too often, like, cause we both uh, remember and pick up different things. Mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying this okay Mm, me too so we do our best when we're somewhere in the middle we're not too aroused but we're also not too bored she says that's true for for HSPs highly sensitive people and someone who doesn't have HSP just everyone then yeah remember when you were a teenager Rachel in those long summer days. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. It was almost like you had too much time and you didn't know how to fill it. Yeah. Um, you were at the age where you couldn't drive yet. Mm-hmm. And so you couldn't do a lot of things. 
but you weren't into the Barbies, you weren't into the dolls, the play. Mm -hmm. I think of being a teenager as that not, you know, not having enough stimulus. Yeah. That's a, something that I didn't would have um, like this cell phone with social media and stuff to just like kind of um, waste time for a lack of better words. I don't mean that in any negative way because I'm guilty. I do it literally all the time, but I, just, I didn't have that. Yeah. As a distraction, if I was bored. That's good though. So when you, how did you, and I don't, I'm going to put you on the spot, but ways in which you could, you know, create some stimulus. And she talks about coffee, you know, going for a walk outside or as a teenager, you know, you're like, oh, what can I do to sort of be unbored? And, you know. Yeah, I grew, grew up in a very, rural setting it's a lot of fields mm -hmm. a lot of farmland and so what we would do is um my cousins were typically visiting their grandmother that lived like down the road from us and so my sister and I would hang out with our cousins and we would go on four-wheeler rides uh we would you know go on walks we would go down to the creek and swim <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Go fishing, do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And did that feel like enough arousal to not feel bored? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's something that's missing for the youth right now. And here I sound like all oh, the good old days without cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no. no cell phone service where my parents live anyway, so it's still not a problem. <laughs> you can go go yeah. offline when you go there? Yes. Yeah. I mean, they have like Wi-Fi you can connect to, but if you, if you want to be off grid, you can, there's the option. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'd go to the library, my nerdy self and pick up not so appropriate books to read about romance oh yeah okay. oh, I'm a teenager hey they, we all yeah. did it and so not we all but some of us did some of us honorary ones and um that would in, you know I would read and then I would pick up some psychology books like you I'd interact with the environment go outside walk with the dogs in the mm -hmm. in the land not my dogs but they were in the area mm -hmm. So look at a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Climb yeah. a tree. Climb the tree. Yeah. Look for some frogs in the spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those things are external stimuli that create a sense of arousal, meaning some motivation. Would you say that is motivating to have some external stimuli, Rachel, like to, to bring them out, out of boredom? Yes. I never really thought of it that way. But yeah, you got to have something going on. Didn't Dr. Claude Pauly teach us that the dopamine comes from the gut and they're not really sure if antidepressants can evoke that dopamine in the gut? Is that what she told us in that I remember podcast? her talking about something like that. Yeah, so I think that it's it's up to the person, the human, to know how to um, interact with their environment and get, you know, a certain amount of arousal to bring about motivation for your day. Um, and that's so true for the highly sensitive person. Yeah, like what... Um what kind of stimulates or arouses you just enough? Just enough. You know, it's kind of like that window of tolerance that we talk about in therapy, which is we want to be on the, the leading edge, as leading Sue edge. Johnson calls it, which is, you know, if you think of a, of a square or a rectangle, the leading edge would be one of the borders, you know, so it's like we're we're pushing and motivating ourselves just enough 
to feel like we're beginning to be outside of our comfort zone, but we're not crossing that threshold. Because it feels good to do something new and exciting, something somewhat challenging, mm -hmm. you know, but it's safe enough that we're not fearful, right? It's exciting to swing on the rope and jump into, you know, the little swimming hole, but you know it's deep enough and you've swam out there and you've checked there's not any dangerous rocks. You're not going to hit your head, right? Nice analogy. Yeah. Oh, it's such a great thing to, to swing off the rope into the creek. Mm -hmm. We do that in West Virginia. We sure do. Yeah. Or jump off a big boulder <laughs> into the water. Yeah. We don't suggest you do that. We, we would never suggest that you ever do that ever unless, you know, you know, no, 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 unless just don't do it. Yeah. We're not an advocate of dangerous, fearful things. Um, number three is the trans marginal inhibition. I know turns. Um, she talks about this um, in this chapter about being the hypersensitive person. And I love her definition is how, how, how soon are we to shut down? And I think that's what Rachel's talking about, the leading edge. I'm just gonna get you close enough, right? Just to that leading edge, but we're not gonna go so far that you play possum, you go dead. Mm. You freeze up or you run away, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think um, what the book and, and other online resources for highly sensitive people kind of stresses is know what uh, triggers you, know what over arouses you. So for instance, like for me, it's crowds. I get very overstimulated in uh, loud places with lots of people, especially uh, post pandemic I've noticed it's oh. even more so yeah because there was this period of time where it was like no crowds no crowds no people yeah social distance so it's, I've noticed it's even worse now than it was before if I'm in a grocery store and I feel like oh like you know if it's like a hot like you know how grocery stores get really busy like before holidays yeah mm -hmm. it feels like there's more people Right. And you, I can like sense the kind of like stress that other people are feeling because they're in a rush and maybe there's the things that they need aren't there. And so everyone's mm -hmm. kind of like rushing around me, trying to get what they need. They're in a hurry. And I'm just like, yeah, I get frazzled. <laughs> I forget what I'm there to get. Um, so I mm -hmm. usually make sure I have a list. Yeah. And so knowing that crowds take me way beyond my window of tolerance, mm -hmm. um, I will do my best to limit them or avoid them when I can. So like grocery pickup has been huge for me. <laughs> so helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, grocery pickup uh, click list employees. <laughs> I'm so thankful. <laughs> Right on. Thank yeah. you. That's so true, Rachel. Yeah, yeah. So for you, feel you because you are an HSP like me, you, mm -hmm. you'll feel people's energy. It's like their their cells are doing this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think anyone yeah. with HSPs understand what like. It's, it's difficult to describe to people that aren't highly sensitive, I think, because they, they don't really get it because they've never experienced that. But yeah, like if I'm in a passing a couple that's arguing, like mm -hmm. I sense that tension and I, I want to like leave them be, get as far away as I can, give them some space. feels like mm -hmm. I'm intruding almost. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't invite you in. No. They weren't inviting you. Yeah. This is just out in the public. 
they didn't invite you into their bond to help as right. you would do in couples. They're just hyper aroused and your body feels the tension. Right. Yeah. This is an example of just out in a social setting where I don't know these people. I'm not working with them. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she stresses that, you know, for her in her experience, she smelled fire in her house and saved her whole family. Oh, yeah. Because she's a hypersensitive person. She was the first to wake and arouse because she, her senses are heightened than other mm -hmm. folks. Yeah. That's where the, she uses the acronym does D O E S. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so this is all highly sensitive people tend to have the D stands for depth of processing, have a mm -hmm. deeper depth of processing, um, our senses, hearing, sight, smell, taste, um, physical sensation. The O is for overstimulation. We are, we get over aroused or overstimulated very easily in environments that have a lot to process. The E is for emotionally responsive or empathic. So emotional, physical, or social uh, situations, we're going to feel those a lot more deeper. We experience pain more intensely. We experience emotions more intensely. And we experience connections and relationships and social situations more intensely, typically, than others. And then the S is for... Um, subtlety sensitivity. So we pick up on these subtleties in our environment that other people may not notice. Mm -hmm. I like that acronym. And being aware that you, you have those experiences, like you're more attuned and experienced the stuff, the subtleties, you know, like her smelling that in the middle of the night in a deep sleep. Mm -hmm. That makes us Amazing. the watch keepers. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're watch talks, keepers. Yeah. She talks about part of, um, cause I think we mentioned in the last podcast that highly sensitive people can be misunderstood or viewed as overly sensitive. And yeah. so one uh, of the things that she's always kind of pressing in the book is to really respect and love these special characteristics that you possess because they are a gift. Mm. And I love that. Yeah. Ain't no shame. Ain't no shame. Yeah. yeah. And when, when folks like, you know, oh, you're just being so sensitive, you're just, you're, if you get your feelings hurt too quickly, like, well, maybe, maybe you're not aware. <laughs> maybe you might look at that person and say, maybe you aren't aware. Your awareness is low and my experiencing is high, mm -hmm. which makes us watch keepers. Yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of a double-edged sword for us HSPs sometimes because it is a gift and it does give us um, some special abilities that other people may not have, like our, our deep ability to be empathetic and compassionate. Uh, but when we're experiencing this acronym, anything in the does, um, that's when our body becomes aroused. And what we mean when we use that term aroused is just like our nervous system is being activated, right? Mm -hmm. So our heart rate it might, is probably going to increase, you know, where our breathing might become more shallow. We might feel a little fidgety because we've got, you know, blood pumping a little faster <laughs> through our body, through our veins, <laughs> Right? And so that's why it is confused with anxiety and fear, right? HSPs will be out in their environment, living their life, everything's fine. And then all of a sudden we feel this arousal and we're like, oh, 
What am I afraid of? What's happening? Why do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. Why do I feel nervous all of a sudden? Yeah, and that's when you do that check-in with self. Why am, I, why am I feeling this way? Slow to respond. Mm -hmm. You just want to walk away from the, the situation or the arousal and check in. There was this time, Rachel, that we went hiking and had a great time. We were going to go tubing in the river. Oh, wow. With my auntie, Mel, so dear to my heart. And the river, and my sister was there. The river, she's great too. The river was just, we're all adventurous girls. It was just pounding through. And they had had two days of heavy rainfall. And my aunt, she, she's, she's on the leading edge all the time. She can get on the edge in life, which makes her my hero. I'm a little slower to the uptick. I'm like, I'm going to slow that down. And now I know why I'm an HSP. Mm -hmm. And I said, a guy came out. He looked injured from the river. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't think it's a good idea we do this today. And she's like, oh, but I want to. And I'm like, I do too. Something tells me we don't need to do that. And that could be the Holy Spirit as, as well. That's my attunement to our universal, you know, God and whatever you believe. I just felt this sense as an HSP that something wasn't good, kosher about the river that day. Mm -hmm. And picking up on those subtleties, it just yeah. rained the speed of the water is gushing is awful fast yeah the sky looks injured good the sky looked injured yeah yeah and later two days later someone I think got hospitalized from that river Aww. so that's what she talks about with ESP like mm. so listen to the HSP in your life they might be saving your life. Yeah. You know. How do you know? And she also says sometimes we get it wrong. Okay. Sure. I think that's true for everybody. Nobody's perfect. We're going to mess up sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But trust us to be the watch keepers. I think that's, that's my new term for us. HSPs is watch keepers. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. In overstimulating situations, she, um, and when we say she, we're talking about Elaine Aaron, by the way, the author of yeah. A Highly Sensitive Person, the book. Um, yeah, so she says to kind of talk to yourself. And I think we mentioned it last time, like a baby, like you would soothe an infant or a toddler, right? And say, wow, this environment, there's a lot going on here. It's so exciting it makes uh, my heart race, right? Because mm -hmm. speaking to yourself in a way that acknowledges that this is over arousal versus fear will help you calm down. Whereas if we, if we get it confused and we start to say, oh my gosh, I'm feeling so anxious, I'm feeling so nervous, just saying those words sometimes will actually then create fear and intensify it. Mm-hmm. And we, Linda and I know that's true because we do that in therapy sessions to heighten emotion mm -hmm. right? and help people, uh, you know, understand what happens in their body when they're feeling a certain way to help them build awareness. Yeah. What you're saying is true. And when you activate worry and fear, cortisol starts pumping through your veins. Mm -hmm. So then you're in fight or flight. And then, then I think that's great. anxious. <laughs> Then you are yeah. having anxiety. Yeah. yeah. And then that goes to, you know, the trans marginal inhibition that Pavlov provides. Just, you just, you just stop. You, you just, how soon can I shut down? You know, say, say I've been hiking five miles. Well, that's my threshold today. Tomorrow it might be 10. Okay. And that's okay. My threshold for that. Yeah. Absolutely. That threshold for the river that day was not there. I felt it. 
So yeah, yeah. It's very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and you, I love how you acknowledged that, right. And, and you expressed your concern and allowed yourself to pause and, and walk away. Right. Without feeling like, Oh, I'm, I'm a failure. I didn't follow through with my plan or right. I think it's hard. Sometimes we feel that way. Like, oh, I'm just a fun sucker. I didn't let us you know. I let everybody down. Mm -hmm. so, but you, you were doing talk. your yeah. felt sense. You were following that inner guide. You know, mm -hmm. What was right for you. And for um, them. And for them. Thanks. Exactly. For them. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. And you're right, Rachel, an HSP might get into a negative thought pattern about self viewing self as well, I'm such a damper on everyone's fun. And man, I just, I'm really not the social butterfly that I need to be. And, you know, and, and, you know, of course, I acknowledge they were disappointed. You know, I'm disappointed. I, I know that you're disappointed. And I feel like I failed you and smell. I feel like I failed you that day because I know you love having good fun and adventure and I might have saved you from a broken leg. So there's two things happening. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Do you think that, Rachel? Like you can have both things happening? Like. Absolutely. Same yeah. time. We don't get, to, when we don't get to follow through with something we're really excited about or right when our what would you call that? Like expectations, the word I'm looking for, right? There it is. You have this mm -hmm. expectation in your example, we're floating all the river. And then that expectation isn't met. Of course, that's disappointing. That's very natural. Yeah. But the way I frame it now is I, after reading that in the newspaper two days later, and I think it's pretty cool that it just pops up two or three people. Or, I think it was two or three people. I can't remember exactly yeah. got hospitalized from tubing <laughs> so yeah, then I was like the water was too much validated yours and mine's antennas like so lean into it don't shy away from it lean into it um but be mindful that you could be wrong <laughs> so that's true mm -hmm. do you think that negative view of self that uh, HSPs feel that maybe prevents them from speaking up for fear of disappointing people or failing comes from um, other people maybe saying things to them throughout their mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because you want to get it right for everyone. You want to please people. You don't want them to feel some kind of way because if they feel some kind of way, you feel some kind of way because you know what they're feeling. <laughs> it's like, absolutely. Yeah. So it even, looks like, yeah, that's a good point, right? So even if someone's never like looked at you and said, you know, you're so disappointing or uh, whatever, you're a fun sucker. You, if no, even if no one's ever looked at you and said that, you're probably going to know that they're, they're feeling that you're going to just pick up on. Mm -hmm. right? And also when we don't, this goes for, you know, almost all of us, when we don't have the answer to something, we have a tendency to make one up. Do you, would you yeah. agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we create, when we don't understand the real meaning, we create one. You know, our brains don't like having no answer to something. We want to mm -hmm. fill that gap. And that's what Rachel and I teach our clients is how do we get language around what we're experiencing in an interaction with someone? And at learning that language, I feel anxious about this river. I don't think it's a good idea or maybe not use anxious. I'm kind of scared to go down this river. You guys are welcome to go, but I don't think this is a great idea today because I've seen the river. And 
you know, that's you saying no for you. And that's where boundaries come in. And you know, I've done podcasts on boundaries. Finding your voice as an HSP, as a watchkeeper and listening is going to save you and it's going to save others. So set that boundary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you like that? I love that. I'm like emphatically nodding my head. Yes. For anyone that can't see see us. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. A thousand times. Yes. Good. I think a lot of times people, and then we'll wrap up. uh, They have a difficult time setting a boundary because they may maybe care about this person, you know, and want this person to stay in their life. And I try to reframe it as you're not saying no to this person you're saying no to the trait or the behavior you're saying no to danger danger is not allowed in your sacred space that's what you're saying no to not this person not necessarily this relationship but the the behavior or the trait that that you don't want in your life like lies distrust things like that is what you're saying no to Oh, that's so good, Rachel. I'm going to do a TikTok about boundaries. That, that's so good. That would be good. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, listening to what you said. I like your sacred place, guarding your, your heart and your space. And the Bible talks yeah. a lot about guarding your heart. And that's, that's okay. Do guard your heart. Do guard your, your sacred space. Yeah, yeah. I love what you said. You are saying no to the behavior, um, not to the person themselves, but to the behavior and the emotional arousal you feel when you're around that person. People don't understand why I set boundaries. And I'm like, mm. because when I'm around this person, I feel angst and hurt and like they have negative vibes coming my way. Yeah. Yeah. And Ah. most, most, yeah, most people are capable of change. And if that person changes, they will be welcomed back into your life, back into your sacred space. But until that happens, you know, sometimes I I, I describe it, sometimes you have to pull the drawbridge up for certain people. You're in your castle, protected by the moat, Uh, you know, certain people you lower the drawbridge for others, you Pull, pull that right back up. That's so good. And the watch keepers are in the Old Testament and they would stand on the castle and watch. Ah, there we go. So there's your drawbridge. Ooh, yes. That's good. I just got cold, like cold chills. I love that. Ooh, they's good. It's my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on the grand stage. <laughs> You're looking good with that mic. You got it's so silly. Oh, well, Miss Rachel, um, so what else would we like to leave our listeners before you and I go to work? Right. Um, I guess, you know, the point of today's podcast was just to expand on the highly sensitive person. Um, And so if you are one or if you know one, hopefully this has helped you understand the difference between a highly sensitive person being aroused or overstimulated by what's happening in their environment Mm. versus Mm. someone experiencing anxiety, the fear and stress of a a negative event. Well stated. Yeah. And if, you know, you would like to find your voice, your sacred place or a drawbridge, you know, you can reach Rachel and I, www.truvonwv.com so hard to remember um and we appreciate you listening and we thank you for all the referrals and the likes on facebook's instagram social media um you're helping our little practice grow so yes thank you so much until next time see ya bye